Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. I got some more Entropia content for today. And I got a whole bunch of news. Yesterday's video apparently caused quite the stir in the Entropia community. And if you noticed I'm coming in a little bit clearer today, I finally figured out what the hell was wrong with my webcam. <laughs> no, I'm going to kind of miss being a little bit blurrier because then I don't have to get cleaned up as much. <laughs> No, what happened was, is, uh, I guess my video, oh god, now anyways, what I was doing is I made a video yesterday talking about how the mankini was banned to be sold in shops, and I guess the d discussion made its way, or the news of that, made its way all the way to Discord. And people have asked me to jump on to Discord. I've used things like Discord in the past when the internet was first invented. Like, I think it was called ICQ chat rooms. And to be honest, I did that kind of stuff for years and years, and I got sick of it. Like, I need to be able to reread messages, especially with my memory and concussion issues. So, I don't know. Discord doesn't work the greatest for me like it used to. But, uh, yeah, I, I jumped on and checked it out. It was kind of neat. Now, so anyways, uh, the makers of the planet Next Island, or the owners, apparently found out about the Mankini not being able to be sold on other planets. And I think they were asking if that was true. So I'm pretty sure that there's a chance that we might actually get the everything resolved. And maybe I will be able to stock my shops with the Mankini after all. But I'm assuming that probably won't come out for another update or whatnot, so... And if that's even true, I don't know, I'm just going on rumors. I'm kind of thinking, God, if even the, the planet creators are hearing about what's happening in my show, I should really try to get my facts more straight. <laughs> now, it's funny, I get a little bit confused where my mouse is. Sometimes I'll think it's on the game screen, and it'll turn out that it's actually on the, the X split screen. So I'm like clicking, trying to go, and it won't. <laughs> now, if anyone hasn't seen it before, this is one of the areas that you can pick up oil. I figured I'd show it, a little bit of action to start to show. Now, most people have heard about the oil rig at Hunt the Thing. This oil rig has been here for a long time, but occasionally the oil gets turned off here. So when the oil is off, some people will come here and go, oh, there's no oil over here. But usually what happens is the two oil rigs on Rocktropia sometimes rotate. So one oil rig will be giving a whole bunch of oil, and the other one won't, and then it'll switch. I noticed someone's already here collecting the oil, so it might be hard to find any to show you guys. Now, so this whole area that's PvP by the gas station, it always has oil spawning. And same deal with Camp Crunk. Best thing to do is to do like a little lap around the whole perimeter, see if you can find some oil. I don't know, oil picking isn't going to make or break your pet account, but I find it's kind of fun. It reminds me of the old Mario games when you have to run around picking up coins, or when you're Sonic and you have to go around picking up rings. In this case, I'm running around picking up stuff, but at least it's actually worth something. I don't know how many people have tried cashing in the rings from Sonic and Mario, but they ain't worth shit. <laughs> Now, I was thinking I had some more exciting news, I can't remember, but I'll try to remember as the show goes. That was the one nice thing I learned about my concussion specialist. She said, don't worry about your memory being gone, gone, because she said at least you're in this situation where your memory's still there. You're just having slower recall speed. Ah, right, here's some oil. So I'm going to maybe find someone who likes to watch Jeopardy, and then fucking tank a whole bunch of seasons of Jeopardy and see if I can get my recall speed back up. Now that might not be a bad idea. Be like, stop smoking or vaporizing cannabis for like a few months. And just fucking tank episodes of Jeopardy. Now I hope Alex Trebek is doing good. If everyone wants to send their wishes for him, he's been battling cancer for, for quite a few years. I think he's a Canadian too. Now my grandma has actually been battling cancer recently too. I don't know if it was cancer or maybe she was just getting tumors removed, but... Very similar situation. 
No, apparently she's out of the hospital, and I don't know if she's doing better yet, but if she's out of the hospital, that's probably a good sign. <clears throat> now, that's the one hard thing about getting older, I noticed, is uh, everyone's like, oh, when I reach 40 years old, my body will be aching. It's like, I don't really think it's that much of an issue of getting old. The main thing is everyone you know getting old and dying. Like, a lot of my friends' parents are all dead now. A lot of my friends didn't even make it to C40. <laughs> so, I don't know. I guess that's kind of the sad thing about getting old is you realize how many people never got the same opportunity you did. Didn't even make it to C40. So, it's like you really got to appreciate life. Now, I often sometimes hear people are sweating to kill time. I'm like, kill time? Time's the only thing you have. Why would you want to kill it? <laughs> Alright, so that's a little bit of the action. Showed you guys where to get some oil here. And I figure I'll show you the next oil rig in case anyone hasn't seen it. Maybe I should release my secrets of where to get the, the hottest selling trade terminal blueprint. <laughs> now, maybe I'll do it as a video just to show everyone so they don't have to keep buying it from the trade terminal. Or maybe they're buying it from the trade terminal because they're just too lazy to come to Rock Trophy and get it. That could be it. Yeah, holy shit, you guys. Like, I couldn't even sleep last night with what you guys did to me. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Well, I'm not really joking. I couldn't sleep last night because, like, I'm so used to always failing at getting subscribers and referrals and everything. And now that the show is starting to see, like, the beginnings of success, it's it's pretty mind-blowing. I can't, couldn't even sleep. <laughs> no, what happened was, is uh, I found out earlier, I think it was earlier in the week, or maybe on the weekend, I found out that someone already signed up to Patreon and have a monthly patron. I was like, holy fuck, that's insane, right? Like, I really got to start picking up the quality of the shows and consistently keep doing them. So anyways, I was like, oh yeah, that's Patreon that's down. I wonder if any of my other referrals have been working. <laughs> it's like, holy fuck, you guys. I don't know, the video game community kicks ass. I can't believe how many of you guys signed up to my referrals. I was thinking, dear God, if you guys keep signing up to referrals like this and using it, or in my Patreon, it's like, man, I'm going to move out of my mom's basement before I'm 50. <laughs> no, to be serious, I always had a dream of moving out before I turned 30, and I managed to pull that one off. But then so has it, money situations and job situations didn't go so well, so I had to temporarily... <laughs> move back in home to save up some money to pull try to do it again but that situation didn't go so well my situations for raising money to move back out kind of got cut short by my concussion and a bunch of other situations i'm really the greatest at getting high paying jobs lately in my youth i was more willing to do jobs that i hated to get paid more but now it's like I'm, I'm kind of more particular. I don't want to do shit that's just going to ruin my life and make me be in pain and agony all day. <laughs> it's not worth any amount of money. So yeah, now I'm being more selective of what types of jobs I'm doing. I'm actually helping my uncle almost full time. So I figure that's kind of a more noble job too. Helping your family out. Alright, so anyways, if anyone hasn't been here before, this is another PvP area in Hunt the Thing. And you can pick up some fucking oil here. Same deal, you have to run around the perimeter, you'll see oil spawning. If there's other people here, normally they don't try to actually shoot you to take the oil. Because that'll be a big drain on their pet account. But, sometimes you might have some competition here. What I like to do is if there's too many people collecting oil at one rig... Then I'll run over to the other oil rig and then switch back and forth. I hoping I could pick up at least one barrel here to show you guys, but maybe this oil rig is turned off right now. On the developers of Entropia, if you ever happen to be watching these videos, sometimes oil gets stuck under these machines. I don't see any here now, so maybe they've already corrected it. There was once an avatar that showed me the trick on how to pick up things that are stuck in objects. And it actually works for people that hide stuff at Twin or like set up elaborate fucking rigs so that they do a competition of who can figure out how to pick up the items. So anyways, one day someone taught me how to do it. I figured it out, well I didn't figure it out, they taught it to me. 
And then I uh, got it to work. I fucking should have wrote it down because I forgot how to do it. So now when I see items stuck in objects, I can't pick them up, but there is a way to do it. If anyone else is able to figure it out and maybe post in the chat, that'd be helpful. I know back in the day, like years and years ago, there used to be an Uber player who would set up a whole bunch of really expensive items at Twin, and he would pile them up on top of each other and use that trick so that no one could pick it up unless they knew it. Man, it was funny. Those objects would sit there for weeks, even months sometimes. No one could figure it out. I think it had something to do with the next item select function or something in the action library. That was able to get a better lock on the item to pick them up. Something like that. Alright, well I don't see any oil at this oil rig. Just a wolf biting me. So, enough with the oil rig here. I'll go to one of the last places that Never Die has set up as his socialist planet of everything free and communism. <laughs> no, in real life I like to make fun of socialism and communism. A little bit. But, in Entropia it actually kind of pulls itself off because... It pulls itself... <laughs> I swear I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> No, what was I going to say is, yeah, they pull it off. <clears throat> now, I think what it is, is Rocktropia, they tried to set up the giveaways to be small and slow enough that they can't bankrupt the planet by giving the shit out. I guess that's the, the problem with communism in real life, is people just milk it to the point where there's no resources left for anyone. You get lines for bread. <laughs> Alright, so the next place I'd like to go, I'd like to say a little tribute to Lemmy. Lemmy was an amazing band member of the band Motorhead. It's like a rock and roll band, I believe. And it's Motorhead Stadium. Now, I think him and Never Die used to do some work together to help design the planet Rocktropia. I'm not sure if Lemmy designed this stadium because there was another Lemmy stadium before and it got updated. So maybe he made the old one, I don't know. Yeah, so what you'll want to do is come to this teleporter. And you will, if you're a noob, you probably won't be getting oil from here because you're going to need a vehicle. Or it's not oil. It's beer kegs. Oh, fucking great. I guess I forgot to recall my vehicle. <laughs> Oh, phew. When I was recalling it there, I'm like, oh, fuck, is it not in this storage either? Oh, wait, this isn't it. Fuck, where's the view item information? Oh, this is it. No, I actually have two of those ships in storage, so I was getting confused if maybe one of them was the other. Oh, come on. Fucking cock whore. <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing. <laughs> Now, I swear to God, guys, I'm going to try to get outside out of the house more. Get my mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't make it worse. <laughs> now, I think what it was is my whole concussion deal kind of put my dating prospects on hold. <laughs> the whole lockdown right after. I was like, dear God. It's like I've been single for a couple years now. <laughs> Uh, some people might joke that on my Facebook pro profile I'm usually always single, but I don't know, I'll do occasionally dating, but I don't really get into relationships too often. It's really kind of hard to find someone that you connect with these days, and usually when you do, they live in another country. 
Now, sometimes I think that's just my personality. I really like being single so much that my body tricks me into thinking I want to be into a relationship with someone who lives in another country. So that way I don't continue trying to go into a relationship with someone local. Now, another main thing I noticed is the whole dating issue in today's economy is kind of fucked up. I don't know, the last girl I was dating, it's like I took her on a few dates to movies and stuff, and I was like, holy fuck. Just after, yeah, this is where you can pick up some kegs. And these kegs have a decent markup. Sometimes I sell them at my shop for 250%. So every keg that you're picking up, you can almost double the value. So instead of being worth one pack each, oh yeah, and that's the other thing, when you pick up these kegs, sometimes there's more than one. So see how it says one? Occasionally you'll get two. And then also when you're walking around picking up these kegs, you can get minerals, like uh, shit and different rocks and fruit. Yeah, so the way Never Die said is planted up. You've got all these free areas where you can go and pick up oil. He got his help from Lemmy so that we could set up this Never Die place. Or not Never Die, Motorhead Stadium. Well, I was going to say too about Lemmy. A buddy of mine used to work at like a... Our city was known for the, the world's largest bar. It was called Lulu's. And it wasn't like a big building bar. I think what it was is they built like an actual bar that you could put your drinks on and had it go around the whole place. I never actually went inside, but I was at the parking lot lots of times because my parents used to party there. It's sort of before my time. But anyways, this uh, bar in Cambridge called Lulu's, it used to have some of the biggest celebrities from around the world that would come and play at it because it's the world's largest bar. And what do you know, Lemmy used to come. So Lemmy was actually familiar with the city that I live in, which I found was kind of ironic. I wish I would have maybe messaged Lemmy and said, hey man, thanks for coming to play in my city. <laughs> it's like, here you are, one of the biggest band members in the world, and he knows where I'm from. A little small town of a, well, it used to be a small town. <laughs> we used to be 100,000 people of like all Germans, but Canada's mass migration programs has brought in like, I don't know, for over a million now. It's like, it's almost all people from China and India. So it's a little bit awkward, like people are like, oh, do you hate mass migration? So you go outside and you can't even understand what anyone's saying because everyone speaks different languages. And everyone isolates each in pockets from each other, like there'll be an Asian area of the city here, an Indian area of the city there. It's not like we're forced to segregate, but I don't know if you've ever lived in a multicultural place. Usually people don't actually multiculturalize. They actually just segregate or self-segregate into different areas. <laughs> no, I mean, near us we have this one place that's like self-segregated of all the people from India and it's called Brampton and man, Brampton is wild it's just like India <laughs> uh, they complain uh, the Brampton media is like hey why does all the people in Brampton have to pay so much for car insurance it's like people don't want to be honest about it but they're like hey the reason you guys pay so much for auto insurance is because you're driving like you're still in India <laughs> fucking like accident city <laughs> now I shouldn't be so mean it's like I went to Brampton it's actually a fun place to live I'd actually like to travel to India someday when I noticed the the cool thing about traveling to India which I never even realized like how much travel and what gender you are really makes or breaks your trip I was like, why are all these guys going to India and then all these girls coming back from India or a few of them and saying, dear God, never go to India. <laughs> then I started to realize it was the whole gender thing, right? Like India is a great place for guys to go travel. <laughs> and why is this? It's because in India, not to be too racist or anything, but there isn't going to be a lot of white guys around, right? Like, so... When you go to India and you're a white guy, all of a sudden you're like a celebrity. And like all the Indian chicks are like, oh, a white guy, right? <laughs> it's the same thing that white girls experience in North America when they open up the borders to mass migration. It's like all of a sudden all the guys from all the other countries come here like, holy shit, white girls. And then white girls are like, yeah, we got all these people worshiping us, right? <laughs> 
So it's like, that's kind of what it's like when guys go to India. <laughs> I started watching a few travel videos where people go to India and they're like, holy shit, man. It's like, you need to pick up a hot chick. It's like, you're like fucking prime real estate when you're in India. <laughs> So now I started to get to the feeling like I never understood why people traveled all over the world before. Like, really, if you want to go to the beach, you can just go to the beach any country. Everyone's got a beach. Right? Or if you want to go to a hotel resort, like any country has that. You could go and sit in a hotel in your own city. But then I realized a lot of people are traveling is because of the whole fucking the racial inequalities around the world. It's like if you can go somewhere where you're fucking, I don't know, like unique or something. That makes it more special for you or it's going to make your trip much more amazing it's kind of like like when you go to a bar in your own city and all the girls are like oh there's just this guy we know and no one thinks you're really that special but then when you go to a bar in another city there all the girls are like holy shit who's this stranger it's like we should all try to impress him or isn't he amazing he's so different <laughs> Now, a lot of the ancient mystery research stuff I do talks about the different cultures and how in ancient times they used to talk about how like the world was like a finely tuned machine and all the different cultures in the world played their own part in keeping this machine running smoothly. And it's like not each culture actually had the same purpose, like each culture did a different part of the machine. It was called the medicine wheel. First Nations people talk about it a lot, almost every tribe or band, I should say. Alright, so this is pretty much all the stuff for Octropia. Oh yeah, there's Lemmy. How could I talk about Lemmy and not show him? Yeah, so rest in peace, Lemmy. Cheers. Thanks for all your fucking work. I know the fucking afterlife is probably rocking now. <laughs> That's the one thing I noticed. I used to be really sad when all my friends and family were dying off. And then I started to realize that if heaven is really filled with all the people that died off, it's going to be a fucking kick-ass party when I get there. <laughs> It's like all the people I like are there. <laughs> yeah. That's one weird coincidence. I don't know coincidence or what it is. Do you ever notice in life, like all the people that you really like, they tend to die the earliest <laughs> or like the nicest people. <laughs> but you know some jackass that you've always hated, he'll live forever. <laughs> That's why I try not to be too nice. What was it? Raven Jade was saying something about <laughs> if you're going to be bad, try to be good at it or something. <laughs> All right, so I got a pretty decent amount of kegs today. I was surprised. I was thinking maybe I'd pick up items and it would just be shit and I'd be showing you guys nothing. So the oil was a little bit hurting. You can see that, but... So if you're on Rocktropia, you want to rake in a lot of free stuff, pick up some oil, pick up some kegs, two locations for oil. Let's see, I'll just have to pause for a second. Uh, sorry about that everyone, I was just helping some people get ready. So, let's see. There was some news about the auction, I believe. I noticed my ped flow center has either gone up or down. It's changed somehow. <laughs> I was thinking if it wasn't the auction, what was it? Well, yeah, maybe my ped flow is the same and I just didn't realize it. No, what happened was as I cleaned my webcam today, like actually scrubbed it with water and cleaned the lens, I was like, holy fuck, there was layers of fucking dust that it built up on. Like normally I dust my room occasionally, but I forgot to dust the fucking webcam. <laughs> And I was trying to figure it out too. I'm like, dear God, the webcam's so blurry these days. What the hell is it causing it? I thought it was some sort of software issue. I'm like trying to adjust the drivers and everything. It's like, fuck no, I just had to clean the dust off. <laughs> now, that's one really good thing about the whole world situation is you start to realize all the stuff that you've been neglecting at home that you have to get done. Like, dear God, I've been talking about doing it, and there's still lots of stuff on the list that I'm supposed to get done before I start going back out doing things normally. 
my disc golf course is still closed to, to me. Basically, the whole world is still closed. Right, so we did that, did that. Maybe I'll swing by the AI place. Now, if people want to know some of the places that me and Beamer, when we did teams, we used to actually be able to global, this was one of them. It's like Beamer didn't like it too much because these motorhead security guards would take a lot of bullets to kill, but they definitely had uh, the occasional global. Yeah, so these motorhead security guards occasionally get into that spot where all the motorhead stuff is. But to get rid of them, usually I just run out here and lure them outside so that they are fucking outside and when I get killed, then they just stay out here. Every once in a while, there's a motorhead god that will go and hang around the stadium and fuck, he's huge and he's hard to lure away. So I don't know if that's a glitch or what it is. Now, that's one trick I use in the game. Instead of uh, teleporting or driving places, I just get mobs to kill me. You get the experience points too. No, how sick and all this talk about naked people. I want to go to the strip club. <laughs> now, to be honest, I've never even been to a strip club in real life. I know I get invited to go to them all the time, even by chicks sometimes, but. I don't know, to me it seems awkward, like, I'm not into orgies and stuff, so going and hanging around in a fucking sexualized environment with a whole crowd of people seems a little bit awkward. <laughs> not to mention, it's like, I don't know, it seems a little bit disrespectful to treat people like animals or pieces of meat. <laughs> not that you want to see naked animals. <laughs> Now this is the one reason I was thinking, oh yeah, this was the one hot stripper. Now I, I know a couple former ex-dancers I used to party with, and even a few that I started to meet on Facebook. <laughs> it's weird, some of my friends will be like, man, the other day I was talking to a stripper. It was amazing. I'm like, man, they're just people and they fucking dance for a living. It's not like they're going to have some fucking like amazing fucking uh, differences compared to other people. Now, some of the girls in high school that I used to party with, smoke weed with a lot, they realized that they liked dancing naked and they were just going to do it because the people would pay them to do it. So I was like, yeah, I could see that. If I was kind of like, didn't, wasn't overly sexualized with my appearance and I was like, hey, I'm a nudist anyways, might as well get paid for it. <laughs> the only issue I think I've noticed with strippers is the whole like high ratio of drug addiction. So that is kind of a dangerous work environment. Like you don't want to be hanging around with a whole bunch of people that are high all the time because it'll make it more tempting for you to do it. But some people are functioning drug addicts, so you can't even really give them a hard time. It's like, you know, some people that are alcoholics and they can only have like one or two beers and they fucking act like a complete jackass. Yeah, you know, other people that can, like, drink cases every day, and it's like it barely even changes their personality. They act the same either way. Oh, yeah, I know something. I was just about to go grab my drink from the fridge. I'm like, oh, I'll leave you guys hanging. But no, one sec. Now, I think if I was to actually go to a real-life strip club, it would almost have to be a different type of environment. Like, what are those uh, art gallery ones where you can, like, go and paint a naked chick and just sort of, like, admire her figure sort of thing? In a, like, respectful way, instead of, like, whistling at her and shit. <laughs> yeah, that I wouldn't mind. I think I could go with that. Or some sort of performance where there's, like, an actual dance involved. Like one of those Broadway shows that is, like, a little bit risque. <laughs> and the other odd thing, I think, too, would be, like, going to a strip club in your own city your chances are you're going to see people strip that you've known or like have been related to 
It's like, do you really, or even old friends from high school? Like, I noticed a lot of my friends from high school, all their kids are adults now. So wouldn't it be weird if I went to a strip club? It was like my old buddy Bob from high school. All of a sudden, his daughter's on the fucking stage stripping. It's like, I don't know if I'd actually even want to watch that. <laughs> It'd be too awkward. It's like, <laughs> She looks just like Bob. <laughs> now I've had that before too, where some of my friends had like really fucking hot sisters and they even wanted to go out with me and they're like, why don't you want to go out? It's like, I kind of find it hard to break it to them. It's like, you look just like my best friend. Like, I don't want to be screwing someone that looks like someone that is a man that I know. Right? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I could like, just close my eyes. <laughs> Maybe the only way I could do it is if their sibling looked nothing like them. <laughs> so there'd be no like recognizing features. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate everyone who's been sharing my information and topics in the fucking discords. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, and that was the other thing. Someone was saying from the Discord, Ooh, I gotta fucking take a break from vaping. <laughs> now today on the vape menu, I packed a bowl, and I was just saying yesterday that I was never gonna spike them again. Well, guess what I did today? <laughs> I spiked it with hash, and I fucking spiked it with a little bit of vapor oil. And I've been conserving my vapor oil because it's the purest oil of the oils that I have. I've got like, I don't know, half a fiver left or so. And I've been conserving and conserving it, but I was like, shit, I can go back to vaporizing it now because my tank is already, has enough in it to fill another half fiver. <coughs> so maybe I'll give some of the vapor oil away. I know back when I was a kid or growing up, I used to know a guy that had really good oil. So maybe I'll give some to him to get his opinion on it. Yeah, sorry guys. Right now, my room started off like reasonably room temperature. But, as I'm recording, it's like turning into a fucking sauna because it's boiling hot outside. Or it's starting to get boiling hot as the morning passes over to midday. Hmm. Now, I remember one time I was doing the, the podcasting, if you want to jump into my guest archive, and the one girl that comes onto my show, what do you know, she wears a fucking super hot top with nice cleavage. I was like, holy fuck, how am I going to do this show? <laughs> a little slightly distracted. No, but it went pretty good. And it was my birthday for that show, so I was like, holy shit, that was a really nice thing for her to do. <laughs> Now, I swear to God, man, if it wasn't for women, would life even be worth living? <laughs> they make everything so much sweeter. All right, enough watching bouncer. <laughs> I could stay there all day. So no, that's what I was thinking. Maybe that what Never Die should do is get the mankini available so that men can wear it and go and dance in there if they want. I think that's the future of Entropia. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and if you're wondering, that strip club is right across from where you pick up the oil. Excuse me, I've been chugging the chocolate milk this morning. Yeah, I'm going to swing by a club never die. Now the hash that I got is just a little bit of finger hash that I made off the sides of the vaporizer. Some areas of it collect hash rather than a liquid. It's pretty potent, but I have to say that it grips you in the lung. <laughs> yeah, so this is the cool nightclub that I like to do a lot of my crafting at that never die owns and built. I think he still owns it. It'd be weird if Never Die sold his own club. 
Right, and then this is where you can pick up the AI mission. I think I was doing it at Camp Crunk the other day. Oh well, yeah, I was going to show you too while I was in the bar. I forgot. Yeah, I know a lot of people are anti Rocktropia, but really this planet is set up for like, if you don't want to waste ped or have be spending ped all the time, there's shitloads of stuff you can do on this planet that they're all free. So there's the the poster where never dies explaining club never die welcomes noobs things that you can do for free I think oh yeah that's what it is I'm trying to read it off the exploit screen I'm like fuck it's all blurry I can't read it it says you can hunt the thing and get all the fucking items from the hunt the thing mission that was amazing but what one issue I had is when I brought some disciples there, the fucking mission chain was broken. And someone was telling me that they were going to fix it soon, so I don't know what happened. Is the mission chain fixed? Does anyone know? Can you bring your noobs there? Or disciples? It says collect oil barrels in the Arctic, so I showed you that. Alright, so this is the one that I got to try to do more. It says here something about sweet, or maybe it's sweat, but never die events. Like, I know there's a lot of events that are going on on Rocktropia, and I've never competed in one or bought a ticket or however that works. So if anyone wants to do an episode or maybe put in the chat, recommend a good episode and watching how these events work. <coughs> When people have asked me to create events, I'm like, create an event? I've never even been in one yet. Alright, so you can collect the beer kegs at the Motorhead Stadium. Yeah, see, that's the one thing I was hoping they would do more of. Actual dances and parties at Club Never Die. Yeah, and then you can pick up fruit and stones off the ground, but you can do that anywhere. It says tune in to CND Live. So I guess there was some sort of radio station that you could listen to. I'm pretty sure I've talked to a bunch of people that did Entropia Radio before. I listened to it a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, here it's listing some more stuff. So you can go shopping at Tangerine. There's no way out security prison. I noticed if you're looking to get a cheap shop, those shops sometimes go for cheap. I was thinking the reason those shops go for cheap is it's almost impossible to get to them. <laughs> like I've been to this, to the, what is it, the jail before. Actually, someone pulled a prank on me in my old guild and got me put in jail and wouldn't tell me how to get out. So I was stuck in jail for a while. <laughs> and if you want to do the prank to someone, maybe I shouldn't tell you. Let's get into a vehicle. Ah, fuck. Just poured bong water down my leg. I don't think I've ever done that before. That really sucked. <laughs> but it did help me cool off a little. <laughs> now what you do is you just bring someone in a vehicle that's new to the game or that doesn't know Rocktropia <coughs> tell them you're gonna go for a little flight but don't tell them where or tell them a lie <laughs> <coughs> and once you get near the jail all of a sudden the ship will automatically crash and every pilot or person in the ship will just appear in the jail and then it's up to you to try to figure out how to get out and I was thinking, I don't know how that worked. Did he get out of the jail and I just didn't see him? Or maybe he didn't get put in the jail? I'll have to try to figure that out. Maybe I'll try it as an experiment. <coughs> yeah, but luckily and one chick in my society was nice and she's like, she'll tell me how to get out of the jail. So she told me I won't give the secret out. But there is a way to get out. And then once you're out of the jail, then it's like, ha ha, you were in jail. Uh, Evil Cathedral. 
Something about vampires and hunting them. Lemmy's Castle. Motorhead Stadium. The Hyperplex. Zom Hatton. Oh yeah, you can mine in Hell. Hell's the only place I've ever had a, a global mining, I believe. Defend the firewall from viruses. Shared mob events. Oh, hunt the zombie Kong. That was the one that never die invited me to. I said, nah, I'm not going to bother. And then it was an all-time high. Shared loot. <laughs> so remember, never say no to never die. Never. <laughs> No, I'm always uh, promoting Never Die's teleport token system. I was very anti against it, but I want to see a boom in the, the vehicle industry in Entropia. That's my main reason for it. it has nothing to do about me making lots of pet. <laughs> Man, I'm almost thinking I should go cough up a huge phlegm lob. <laughs> Sorry, too much information. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, that was the thing. I picked up some items and I brought to put in my Camp Crunk shop. Got some Christmas trees and stuff, but hey, shit, maybe I should save that stuff for Christmas. Let's enjoy summer with some summer themes. Alright, so I guess next on my agenda, <clears throat> I was going to order some of the components needed to craft the mankinis and bikinis here on Rocktropia, but it doesn't really seem to make sense right now, other than the bikinis. Yeah, maybe I should ship some. But no, really before I can start shipping crazy materials, I'm going to have to sell my metal residue, or start cashing in some of my referral awards. Thanks guys. <laughs> But yeah, like, holy fuck, people even subscribe to Entropia Partners. So now everyone who's doing projects on Entropia, I'm getting a percentage of it for referring them. And it's like a few fucking lists of people. Like, dear God, if this keeps going well, I'm going to be out of my mom's basement before I'm 50. You just wait. <laughs> now, to be fair, my mom's basement is actually fucking amazing. It's not like, it's an old hundred-year-old house, but... It's been renovated, so it's not that bad. And it's big enough that I can put my studio for my show. Studio slash desk. <laughs> yeah, so I got 386 of metal residue. If anyone wants to swing by and buy it, I've noticed I have it slightly undercutting uh, <laughs> Raven Jade's metal residue. <laughs> not to be mean or anything, but I really want to sell this quick so I can start my next crafting run. And fuck it, I'm just going to pick up this shrapnel. I think that's a retarded thing to put for sale because it's too overpriced at the amount of markup I have to charge for it in order to place it for sale and cover the tax automatically. So, <laughs> now I do have a blueprint for the Renoa bikini. If anyone wants to make a crazy offer, I'm not even really selling it, but I'd probably be convinced by like a thousand pet. <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, fuck, they're selling the blueprint so cheap. And it's like, no, that's just the thing itself. Yeah, at least this print is maintaining its value a little bit more than the fucking mankini print. I'm wondering if the Mankini print just crashed in value because of not being able to sell it at shops. I'm probably not the only person who encountered that. They're like, shit, I can sell Mankinis, stock up my shop. <clears throat> no, and people are like, oh, don't bitch and complain so much because you can still sell them on auction on any planet. I'm thinking, well, doesn't that deplete the purpose, though, of having a shop? Like, if I have a shop, it's so that I can sell things at it. <laughs> I can't sell things at it and only can sell them on auction. Fuck! <laughs> <clears throat> I 
Yeah, so to do this little project on Monria, I do have enough pet on me now. So I'll go and do that. <coughs> now, normally I don't cough too much. It's when I start putting in the fucking hash. That finger hash is almost more like resin than it is hash, so... It really, it takes a bite. <laughs> Alright, so it's 46 ped. If I sell it, I'm only going to get like maybe 1% interest at most. If I'm just going to mark up, so I'm just going to trade terminal it. Should ask this guy. He probably wants to buy shrapnel. <laughs> Man, he's very trippy. <laughs> I like his color. Excuse me. Alright, so this way I'm over 200 ped. Oh, I know what it is. Probably when the game developers blocked the item so that I couldn't equip it, they didn't realize that not only were they blocking the equip, but they had it blocked out completely. So that's what's that's what's preventing me from clicking on it and using it or giving me the option to place it because I can't click any of the options on it. <clears throat> so if the game developers want to fix it, that's all they really got to do. I think I'm all out of Renault bikinis. I only had two, right? So I placed one in each shop, you guys, and I don't even have one on me. So if anyone wants to get one, you'll have to go to my shops. Sorry about that. I'll try to make some more. Let's see, how many do I got? Three, six, no, four, eight, nine. <clears throat> so I guess I had ten in total because I gave one to Bonnie. <clears throat> now I hope I'm saying Bonnie's name right. I keep looking at how it's spelled. I'm like, shit, that doesn't really look like Bonnie. <laughs> Could have swore I've heard her say her name, or I forgot. <clears throat> Alright, so I think before I leave, yeah, what else did I have here? I guess I sold the other ones. Because I was into vehicle crafting on Cyrene, I was actually making these Spear MK1s, 2s. Can't remember if I was making 3s, maybe 3s, or even 4s and 5s. But anyways, yeah, I was making a whole bunch of these and selling them. I did that for a while, but I never globaled once making them. So maybe I should have been sliding the bar a little bit, yeah. But anyways, I had some bad luck with that, so I kind of got away from doing it. But if someone wants to order a whole bunch of spears, just let me know. I actually have the unlimited print to make them. I believe I have two unlimited prints to make them. Let me check that. I was thinking the blueprint book for what is it? <clears throat> Siren says Arcadia or Arc. It's like, isn't that a little confusing? Like, shouldn't the Arcadia blueprint book say Arc? <laughs> I 
Maybe I'll do an episode once on bonding liquid when I get to Cyrene. It's gonna fucking blow your guys' mind. Maybe not blow everyone's mind, because some people already know about it, but... <laughs> really, it's so tempting that I could just stay on Cyrene and profit from that print. <clears throat> Alright, so... There we go. There's my Lancer Unlimited print. And you can tell the quality rating's at 4.2, because I actually used this print. I was making Lancers, so it wasn't whatever this thing is. Spears. It was Lancers that I was making. And I'm pretty sure, if I'm thinking the Lancer, I might be getting it confused, but they're sort of like a... I think it does look similar to that. Fuck, I can't even remember. It's been years since I rode one. But yeah, it was like a hover jet bike. And you could use it on water. So if you wanted some water vehicles, you found some. Uh, here it is. So this is the Spear MK3. So I also have an unlimited print for it. And you can see I've also used it. The quality rating's at 4. So if anyone wants to like start becoming vehicle dealers for either of those vehicles and they need someone to help craft to supply them, just let me know. That was my issue. I don't like to craft a whole bunch of shit that I can't sell. Like at my shop. Technically can sell vehicles. Oh yeah, I'll do that when I get to Monrea. Fuck, shouldn't have did this here. <laughs> the throat hasn't recovered from the last one. <laughs> Alright, before I finish explaining the rest, we'll just do a quick message from the sponsor. Today's show is brought to you by Crack. Crack. It'll fuck you up. Yes! I remembered what scene. <laughs> now this show was helping my memory, I swear. <laughs> now, so that's, yeah, some of the Spear NKVs. What was I saying that I was going to show you something when I got to FOMA about these? Hmm. wonder what that was. <laughs> oh yeah, that was the shit. Remember how I was telling you that the fucking FOMA shops kicked ass? Well, the main reason is one place that you can go in FOMA... And it, or any place in FOMA where you die, it has a spawn terminal, right? So I was like, I wonder where this spawn terminal is. Wouldn't you know, it's right fucking next to the shop. <laughs> so at one point, I had a shopkeeper next to the fucking respawn terminal on FOMA. So you can imagine, that helped raise the price of the shop when I wanted to resell it. I was like, hey, check this out. Every player that dies will respawn right next to your shopkeeper. It'll be the first thing they see when they come back to life. <laughs> so what I did is I took that shopkeeper, how it relates to these vehicles, is you can sell vehicles in a shop if you have a shopkeeper. Yeah, that's what I forgot to mention in my shopkeeper video. The whole vehicle spiel. Yeah, so what I did is I started taking some of these spears and lancers and putting them in that shopkeeper, and they were selling. But the only problem, I think, is you couldn't use them on FOMA. Or not FOMA, Monria. So, yeah, this whole story is about Monry. I don't know if I was saying FOMA there. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so that was the, the the greatest thing about the shops on Monria is that that fucking, that's, that fucking guy, my shopkeeper, I could put him right next to where you spawned. So that was kind of why I got out of manufacturing these, is eventually I needed to raise some ped, and I realized that the amount of money I was getting from my shopkeeper selling those vehicles was less than I would make if I just bought a CLD with it. So once you're weighed with that option, that's how I ended up getting rid of my shopkeepers. Which really is kind of sad because I want to get back into the shopkeeper and vehicle and that's the other thing if you want to sell apartments and estates, you can't sell those at your shop unless you have a shopkeeper too. No, I noticed too, like when it comes to shopkeepers and putting them at your shop, I always thought that there were shopkeepers just for selling stuff. 
But fucking lo and behold, I found out a shopkeeper exists that you can get that buys, not just sells. So what you can do is like set your shopkeeper and say, hey, I'll pay TT plus like a hundred for this Canadian flag and create an order for it. Then that shopkeeper will just keep buying people's items at that price until it runs out of whatever pad you stocked it with. So I was like, holy shit, man. I really wish Entropy would get more of those fucking shopkeepers out there. The only time I ever encountered one was at a bank, I think. Like if you go into some of the different banks you find in Entropia, sometimes you'll find those shopkeepers and they're buying shit. I think those shopkeepers even had like loan options where you could get loans with some of your items in the bank from the terminal. So I don't know what's the deal with Mindark. Like why did they keep the, the, the sell shopkeepers like so abundant but the buying ones are so rare? If I was in charge of Mindark, I would reverse that. The buying ones are the most crucial ones because people could use them to set up their own mission chains. Like it's neat how Entropia makes mission chains, but wouldn't it be neat if players had the ability? I guess that's like the events, but I mean with like actual buying shit and reward type shits. Or maybe you can set up a rewards in the events. That's probably how it works. Like when you set up your own event, can you like set a reward so that people get a certain thing in your event that they'll win? But yeah, that's the whole deal. Like when you set up these events, that uh, yeah, like this is an event area here. So Doc used to hold events on Sundays. I don't know if he still does or not. Ah, see, here we have a nice guy shopping at my shop. I'm pretty sure he's actually bought items before. I recognize his name. <clears throat> Alright, I guess I'll say thanks for checking out my shot. And it's kind of ironic that I've been calling my shop the sweatshop for a while and all people are complaining that I don't have any sweat in stock. It's because the sweat price started to skyrocket so I'm going to have to either finish resetting, re-sweating that stack that I had in storage. Yeah, and I think uh, tomorrow's episode, what we'll do is, I guess today I was supposed to fly to foam and I did a whole episode just summarizing some of the stuff at Rectropia. Oh yeah, fuck, I forgot to call or message Raven Jade, see if I could get a hold of her to hook her up with one of the mankinis. Oh yeah, I was going to find out too if I can even trade the mankinis. I'm starting to wonder if you can't even private trade them unless you're on Next Island. The only time I've ever tried using the mankini was on Next Island, everything was working there. You could private trade it, you could wear it. So I just kind of assumed that maybe some of the other planets would have it and only one or two would be banned. But I didn't think it was Entropia Wide Universe banned. Well, there was a guy that was showing, like, there was a link that they published. It had all the information. I didn't know about that link. Well, I did know about it, but I didn't know where it was, like, to click it, to read it. Maybe it was in, like, the terms of service somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone has the link, I guess I should have posted it when he sent it to me last, yesterday. I forgot to record it or copy it. So, yeah, that's what I'll do is maybe add that to the description below. And all the other stuff you can find below. I really appreciate it, guys. I'm still fucking floored how many people signed up for the referrals. I think what it is partially is a lot of those referral offers are kick-ass. And I use them myself all the time. So I had a feeling that people might be like in the same situation as me. Wanting to make money for listening to videos, watching videos, playing video games, getting extra money for Entropia and buy back on your purchases online. The buyback from your purchases online one kind of freaks me out. Just because everyone's shopping online these days. And it's like, can you imagine if you got all your friends and family to sign up to swag bucks and you started getting referral money for everything they buy? And it's like they buy everything online. That would add up pretty quick. <laughs> so yeah, hoping guys, like man, you really might give me out of my mom's basement before I'm 50. 
I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> well, some people say you're pretty funny, and like I think of what it could be is I'm not really trying to be funny. It's more of just the observational humor thing. It's like everyone could do this these days. It's not just me. It's like our lives these days are so fucked up by like the way technology is fucking up things and everything around us seems the opposite. And just talking about how everything's opposite is like seems funny. <laughs> but it's really just life. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, I guess that's enough like full of philosophical debates for me today. I uh, appreciate everyone for watching all the shows, uh, all the daily likes. It's fucking blowing my mind. <laughs> and yeah, I was supposed to think of something prior. Let's see. Oh yeah, have you ever seen those river otters that play with rocks? They like to juggle them. And if I happen to see a river otter and he's fucking juggling a rock of crack cocaine, and he throws that into your vaporizer. Oh, can you actually vaporize crack? That'd be fucking nasty as hell. You better give it two dislikes. Or a like, dislike, dislike, dislike for that one. Because, man, that'd be fucking nasty. Now, people have asked me if you can vaporize crack, and I said, I, said, I never actually tried vaporizing crack. I've seen crack destroy so many lives that I actually would never do it, so... I don't know. It's one of those things. Yeah, I'm sure it's a wonderful drug and you get a great buzz from it, but for how addictive it is and how fucking makes you rob your friends and family to get the money to buy it, it's just not worth it, right? <laughs> it's like weed's definitely more than enough for me and it's legal in Canada, so I'm fucking set. <laughs> right? Yeah, thanks everyone for watching and yeah, what was it? Make sure that you never buy the products from our sponsor. Like I just mentioned, crack will ruin your life. <laughs> See you later, everyone. Catch you later. Bye for now. Check out the Discord on Entropia. Mention this video. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Almost forgot the exit scene.